it's definitely like, I don't know, I'm getting, I'm going to a jazz cafe, you know, to sit back and, and watch people do poetry and play the piano and stuff. It gives, hey, hey everyone, and welcome back. It is your girl, Nicole Austin, Miss Austin, if you're nasty. And if you are new here, well, welcome. And if you aren't new here, definitely thank you for returning and thank you all the new watchers for watching for the first time now those of you who are new what we do here is we speak about perfumes and it looks like predominantly perfumes but that's what the people want but some of the other content i do like to do is like day in the life of vlogs or um places to go and eat that's in sur the surrounding atlanta area uh, and if I go other places, of course, I'll take the camera with me and we can eat in those places too and, you know, give a review of the restaurant, the food, the experience, and the whole nine. But today we are still talking about perfume. Now it is September 4th and I'm recording this, which means that fall is right around the corner and it is time to get the fall fragrances out. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I believe in wearing fragrances all year round because I'm gonna wear what I wanna wear. I spent my money on the perfume. I'm gonna wear it when I get into the mood for it. But the reality is that some perfumes do just work better depending upon the weather, depending upon what's going on with your body. Like it's, you know, certain, certain perfumes okay when you sweat. Some don't work so well with the sweat. Some work better with cold weather, some of the notes, so on and so forth, right? So let's get into the fragrances that are my top five for fall of 2020. Okay guys, so before I get started, I definitely wanna say like, comment, and subscribe. I would highly appreciate it. That's how we get the content out there. That's how we get this channel flowing. That's how I can produce more content. That's how I can do, produce better content, right? So definitely go ahead and do that uh, for me. Let's just jump into it. No need for long talking. Now the first one on the list, Okay, and I'm gonna be doing the list in order of the most affordable to the most expensive, and I wanna to touch everyone's budget, right? So the first one on the list uh, is probably my favorite cool weather fragrance that is affordable, right? And I got this from a suggestion from another, not YouTuber, but a TikToker, and I want to try it out. So it came from Zara, and it is Ebony Wood. So this is the bottle for those of you who are not familiar. And they have the larger bottle too. And I wanna say the larger bottle, cause this one was $19.90, so $20. And I think the larger bottle was $39. So it's definitely worth, in my opinion, getting the larger bottle because it's still inexpensive. Now, the thing about Ebony Wood is that this is a unique, smell and i don't know if it's the pink pepper that's in there i don't know um if it's just the ebony wood because ebony wood is actually a wood uh fragrance that's in here a wood scent that's in here but it is very unique to me it borderlines a unisex scent because i can i can picture a man wearing this uh fragrance as well but it's also you know it's also feminine you can make it feminine this is definitely a fall fragrance and I think the ebony wood is what makes it so fall it it kind of reminds me of like you know when fall rolls around keep saying fall but you know when it rolls around like the supermarkets are starting to sell those I don't know what they're called but those little and I'll put it someplace on the screen here to to let you know but those things like at the front the different types of dried flowers and so on and so forth this kind of reminds me of that. Not that it necessarily smells like a dried flower or like those cinnamon branches, but it is very reminiscent of those fall time fragrances. So I think this is a great option if you are looking for something that's affordable, but something that smells good. And because it's unisex, to me, it can go for men or for women. One last thing that I forgot to mention about Ebony Wood is the projection and the longevity. Because I do want to make sure I mention that in all videos. Ebony Wood, it's... <laughs> When we're talking about affordable perfumes, guys, don't expect to get an all-day wear out of it, at least not for me. I would say before having to respray, maybe three hours, four hours, this is definitely something, especially because a bottle is so petite that you could just throw in your purse uh, and, you know, go about your day or, you know, go ahead and I have the little... Uh, bottles that I go ahead and sometimes fill depending on the fragrance uh, and then you could just bring that with you you know autonomize the the fragrance so yeah you're not going to get a lot of uh, longevity on here I would say the initial projection is pretty good I have gotten compliments on this fragrance but I'm also a notorious oversprayer so that may have something to do with it 
the next fragrance on the list, my number two, I have mixed emotions about this fragrance. I'm going to tell you why. I love the way that it smells. Absolutely adore the way that it smells. However, the hype behind it is not really given what it's supposed to. Uh, because, you know, this came out and this was said to be uh, close to a dupe for Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. And while they do have similar notes, that's not my issue that it's not a dupe. That's not the problem at all because for every fragrance is going to have its own individuality, right? It's that it, it, the longevity, the projection is not there for me, but let's talk about it. So we have, I knew you guys knew I was talking about K. Ali's uh, Love Fest, Burning Cherry. Now, this smells great. It is very similar in scent. It's not a dupe exactly, but very similar in scent to the uh, Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. Like when you first spray it, and to me, the Burning Cherry is an excellent sub name or whatever you want to call it for this fragrance because it does smell like a cherry that is burning and roasting on a fire. Very much has that uh, that roasted smell, which I actually love in fragrances and also what makes it good for fall, right? It very much has that um, patchouli. Anytime patchouli is in a fragrance, I know it's going to be cold weather friendly, right? It's something about that patchouli. The issue, like I was saying, that I have with this, and I am so disappointed because I feel like had it not been for the fact that once I spray this on my skin, literally, there's no scent. It smells great coming out the bottle. It smells great when I initially spray it, but within five minutes, it's gone. The reason why the fill line, I don't know if you guys can see the fill line. The fill line is even that far down. I've worn this, guys, twice two times. The second time was just to test to see if the first time was true. And I had to over spray. I had to spray myself like three times and still there was no projection. No one mentioned this fragrance. No one said anything. Even people who hugged me because one of the times I wore it to like a family event. People who hugged me and typically if I'm going to get a compliment, it's going to be from someone that hugs me if it's not a, a fragrance that projects. And it just, it didn't do it. I didn't smell it very even, hardly even smell, smelled it on my clothes. It was hardly even on my clothes. So I would say maybe it needs to be, I need to try it out because it was in the, the heat of summer, not the heat, but it was in August. It was very hot that day. I was doing a lot of sweating. So maybe I need the both days. So maybe I need to go ahead and try it in the fall to see if there's a difference. So that's why I'm putting on the list because honestly, the smell is great. The smell is great. It's just this projection and longevity for me, just, it, it doesn't live up to the hype in my opinion. Before I get to the third scent, I do want to kind of add this on to the Burning Cherry or the Love Fest, right? This is from Alt. Cherry Smash. This is supposed to be a dupe for Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. I will say that it smells very similar to Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. Again, I wouldn't say a complete dupe or super, super close to it, but... We know that for the price tag that Tom Ford is, is trying to charge for that Lost Cherry and the projection and the longevity is so trash for it. This I've found to have a similar smell, have way longer uh, longevity, well, longer longevity, just longevity. <laughs> and also the projection is really, really good. You can see like the fill line on this. I use this a lot. It is for this size bottle, I think it was $39, okay, which is half the cost, more than really it's a fraction of the cost of the Kali's love fest and to me it just it does it does the best job if i'm comparing tom ford's lost cherry love fest and this cherry smash to me this just does what it needs to do so next on the list is actually one of my favorite perfumes just period now this is a recent find i want to say i bought this in maybe March or April of this year uh, when I really started developing this perfume collection. Uh, and it comes from a company that you wouldn't expect to really, or I didn't expect to really fall in love with, at least have to fall in love with the fragrance like this, but it's everything. And that is Glistening Amber by Juicy Couture. Now this retails i want to think is 110 120 dollars someplace around there but i know fragrance net often has it for like 70 dollars 76 dollars something like that so it is on sale uh less expensive than the burning cherry but retail you know it's higher now it i think it is the incense in here the musk the frangipani but this is a perfect fall scent 
It is warm. It is spicy. It kind of even gives me the same kind of essence as like the ebony wood, although they're two different fragrances, but it's, it's that same type of like scent family in my opinion right they may even probably mix well together if you were to like combine them i never tried it so i can't say for sure but definitely uh it has again it has that essence when i wear this i would say of all the fragrances that i'm talking about today this one gets the most compliments there has not ever been a time that i've worn this perfume and i did not get at least one compliment on it it is amazing. It is definitely cold weather or cooler weather um, friendly. I think this can go well. This 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 is not an everyday fragrance in my opinion because it's too special to be like an everyday going to work type of fragrance. But it's definitely it's definitely like I don't know. I'm getting I'm going to a jazz cafe, you know to sit back and, and watch people do poetry and play the piano and stuff. It gives very much that. It's like artsy to a certain degree. Um, so definitely it's like a special occasion, but it's like a special, a special occasion. So weddings are cool, you know, uh, and all of that, but definitely, like I said, that cafe type of thing, you sitting down, you know, you writing your journal, gives Love Jones vibes a little bit. But yeah, I absolutely love it. But let's talk about some of the notes uh, in this in this fragrance. So in the top, it opens up with raspberry and frangipani. Then in the middle notes, we have vanilla, orris, and incense. I'm telling you that incense, baby. And then in the bottom notes, on the base notes, is um, casmaran, amber, and musk. Definitely also a musky fragrance. Definitely a musky fragrance here. And I love musky fragrances because to me, it adds a certain level of maturity to it. Not old lady-ish or anything, but definitely adds a certain level of maturity when we have musk involved. Next on the list, not doing any long talking behind this one because we've spoken on this channel about this perfume before in detail, and that is Miss Athalia. Okay, now we know that Parfums de Marley does an exquisite job of like crafting their bottles, right? Very, very feminine, very, very uh, sophisticated, very, very mature, but not grandma-ish. Again, it's a lovely fragrance. Now this is definitely an everyday fragrance and it's also a pricey fragrance. So this one retails at $335. Now, of course, I recommend checking reselling websites, places like Mercari, to see if you can get it for more affordable, but you're still gonna drop some money on this, even if it's at a lower rate, but try to get it for the lower rate, y'all. But when I tell you this bitter orange, this orange blossom, and this musk, which are the main notes in this perfume, it does so much. The longevity for me, because I remember when I was telling you guys about it the first time, um, I was saying I'm not sure of the longevity because I had just worn it that day. But the longevity, I want to say I got about six about six hours out of this without having to respray, where I can still smell it like you know it was pronounced. It wasn't faint. It did go into a skin scent after around that time, but it was still on my clothes. It's not heavy at all. Uh, this is this is a, a scent that's perfect for almost anything that you can think of. So going to work, going on a date, um, going to hang out with your girls. Uh, you just want to kind of chill around the house, but still smell, you know, soft and feminine. This this is that perfect fragrance because the price tag is so hefty. This may not be the everyday fragrance if you want to know, preserve it. But then again, if you got it like that, baby, you got it like that and make it the everyday fragrance. But I love it. I can't wait until fall really hits because I live in Georgia, so it's still a little bit hot right now, but I can't wait till fall really hits so I can get that full essence of these notes because I know it's going to be, again, chef's kiss. Now last, but certainly not least, is the most costly of all of the ones we discussed today, but this gives, I'm about to, let me just show y'all, let me just show y'all. It's the House of Sia's Passion de l'Amour. This girl here retails for $360. Okay, this this got a price tag to it. This got a price tag to it. I'm not going to hold you on that one. However, again, this is, I think, it gives the same type of vibes at the, as the Ebony Wood, as the Glistening Amber. It is woodsy, musky, Still feminine, 
It is special. It's unique. Again, while yes, it is in a similar category to those fragrances, it doesn't smell like them. It reminds me of, of that perfume. But if I were to smell any of those, I wouldn't say, oh, it's a dupe or it's similar. It's not similar. It's just, you know, I can categorize it in a similar type of family. When I tell you that anytime I wear this, I feel like a million bucks. And keep in mind, I purchased this in the summertime. So I have not worn this this summer. I have not worn this in the fall yet, in the cooler months. I know this projection because in the summer, I would say, now for the price tag, I, I have to be fair and honest. For the price tag, this should have a much longer um, time span of where it projects. But when you first put it on, it's going to project, honey. It's going to project. People have asked me what I was wearing when I'm wearing this one. It's not, I haven't gotten the compliments that I've gotten from that glistening amber. Glistening amber is going to take the cake. But this, this definitely, uh, you know, is a crowd, crowd pleaser. Um, it is... I want to say because saffron is in these notes, it may, and I love saffron. Oud is also in the base note, and I love oud. So, you know, that makes it more mature. Again, none of these are old lady mature, but I will say this one, especially this one, and maybe the glistening amber, maybe, you know, depending on your taste, I would say 30 and up. Maybe 28 if you're really, you know, you really just that girl. You really just sophisticated like that. But this is definitely uh, mature, but it's not granny mature. Oh, I love everything about this perfume. Matter of fact, I might wear it today because I have some place to go. So I might actually put this on today. Uh, but I, I love it. But let's get into the notes of of this Passion de l'Amour by House of Siage. So in the top notes is saffron and raspberry. I also notice I gravitate towards scents that have raspberry in it. Uh, in the heart notes, which is the middle notes, we have caramel and amorous oil. And in the base notes, we have oud, leatrix, and absolute. And it also does have a boozy, that absolute. It does give a little, it's a little boozy, a little, a little boozy, very warm, very feminine, very sexy. And when I say very feminine, it's not very feminine. It's just feminine because it 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 is not super girly, super, but it's still, it's still for women to me. I just love it. I really just love it. I absolutely love it. It is my favorite purse I purchased from the House of Siage. I have a few House of Siage fragrances, have a few cupcakes, and this one definitely by far is my favorite favorite fragrance. All I will say though that all of House of Siage fragrances are pretty distinct. It is something that you don't particularly smell all of the time, as opposed to like all the other brands where they have other fragrances that may smell like other house fragrances. House of Siage has done a really, really phenomenal job at making their fragrances very, uh, very, very unique overall. So just love this. Just love this. Yeah, I think I'm going to be wearing this today. I think so. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Love it. So yeah, guys, that is it for today. I hope this was helpful. And please let me know in the comments, you know, how you feel about any of these fragrances. Let me know what you'll be wearing for the fall. Let me just, I just want all your opinions, good, bad, or ugly. I don't care. Let me know. Cause I want to learn things too. Because like I said, I just started my perfume journey, my fragrance collecting this year. I've learned so much. I have gotten to the point to where I can see notes in, you know, fragrances and know if I like it or are not going to like it. So it makes blind buying so much easier for me. And I'm just looking forward to growing on this journey and you guys growing with me. So again, thank you so much for watching. But until next time, be safe and stay blessed.